It's your boy 2Js. I'm out here in Seattle, right? And so I wanted to kind of test my skills at catching and throwing fish since I've been pretty good at catching sneakers. And uh, after I'm done with this, come catch me at SneakerCon Seattle tomorrow. See you soon. store is that they got it broken down by size so in the little toe size like me they have uh, Jackie Rob like Jack my Rob I'm Jackie Robinson Yo, my, I'm showing my age with lines from rappers that you might not remember that made it in life. This is a good one. What's your honest thoughts on this? People hate on it. They need to make more. They need to make more. This is like the uniform. This is like when you work at McDonald's, you make fries, you have a McDonald's shirt. So when you do sneakers and you have sneakers, you have to have a black white shoe. Black white thumb. Make more. It's in my top 100. I dislike this more than I dislike black white thumb. I actually like black white thumb. These. These like I don't have good energy when I when I see these like I get like bothered because if this is too try hard. Yeah. This ain't try hard. This is like I want to be safe, or comfortable, and socially accepted. This is like look at me, bro. I'm fucking cool because I wear New Balance. No, I just met Chris in Union, and it was really dope. Is this the only size you have? Yeah, that one, yeah. Just kind of yeah. Size of eight. Eight and a half? It might have an eight, but it was more like a lot. This one is size eight, but it's a leather one. What is it? The, you said you have that I have a size one? eight of that one. We were going to use it for a vlog, but I mean, I'm, we can find another one. Uh, let me try this now. Oh, right. Yeah. Like, what did Actually, 
Is it? Yeah. Please direct I'll take these, bro. Can you have the size I was like. So there's a store in Vegas that kind of shows me a little bit of love because I bought a lot of stuff there for now. So like, when they get releases, they have like a VIP program and they'll send me links and they send me a link for the other pair and not this one. And I wanted this one because the blue because of the store color. And then it was kind of cool to talk to Chris from Union and be like, yo, you know what? Like this gives me hope. And I went like this to shoot. This tells me one day Urban Necessities is going to have a Nike shoe one day. Just to show a little bit of it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. No, I appreciate it. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you coming by the shop. Appreciate you guys checking out the shop. We just opened up about four months ago. Tribute right here in the Renton Landing. Bunch of food spots out here to check out. Sneaker con tomorrow, so big, big day for us. I uh, appreciate 2J's coming by and showing us love. I wouldn't miss it for the world. How are you? Yeah, I'm trying, trying. How are you? When'd you get in? You... Gotcha. It's okay. You came by yourself? No, just AJ came. Got you. Man, I'm so tired. I don't know how the fuck you do it, bro. Like uh, a I super, bo like pro. I, I, I came in uh, Monday morning. Here? No, no. Oh, directly. back. Yeah, 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 yeah. I went to my office directly. I work all the way till five o'clock. Before the Super Bowl, I did the same thing. Yeah. Super Bowl. I went to Super Bowl. I went to Vegas for the Magic Show. From, from I, I didn't go. From Magic. Yeah. I'm Connor, I'm the manager over here at Throwbacks Northwest, Seattle's number one destination for vintage clothing and vintage sportswear. And uh, I got 2J Kicks fam here, and we're gonna go over some of our best pieces here in the shop. So let's get going. So, uh, you know, sneaker cons tomorrow here in Seattle, first time sneaker cons ever coming. So uh, I went and sourced some of these old uh, Nike Space Jam joints. This one's pretty crazy, double sided. You got Porky the Pig and a little spaceship. But this one's even crazier because this was actually made in the 90s before he even came out to uh, the MLB. This is from his Japanese team, the Oryx Blue Wave. And so you can see it's got the little Blue Wave tag at the top right there too. But um, yeah, so this one's from the 90s. Um, he came over in 2001. 
But yeah, this joint's pretty crazy. It's our Jordan Grail in the shop right now. Went over it earlier. It's called the Playground Tee. They gave these out with like little VHS tapes. Um, so there's this video, it's almost like an instructional, like tutorial video. If your kid was getting into playing basketball, these t-shirts were also included. And one of the last episodes of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, uh, Will Smith actually wore it. And you know, that just always kind of raises the value when things like that happen. Want to end on a Sonics joint. Adam Silver stopped playing with us. We're ready for our team. We need him back. But uh, this is uh, actually by Magic Johnson. He had his own t-shirt company back in the 90s. And so this one's pretty cool. He did these wild, like, all over print t-shirts. But uh, this is definitely one of the coolest Sonics tees we've ever seen. So yeah, with that being said, that's some of our better pieces. Some of uh, stuff we'll have tomorrow at SneakerCon as well. So again, throwback to Northwest, Seattle's number one destination for vintage clothing. We're on uh, 11th and Pike up in the Capitol Hill neighborhood. Come check us out. We out here in Seattle, just checking out some of the shops before we pull up to SneakerCon tomorrow. Uh, you should buy your tickets if you haven't because this is uh, Return of 2J so I might be buying some shoes or uh, pulling up and grabbing some consignment or buying bigger jackets that I don't fit in because it's that cold. Out here. We're consigning a couple of shoes and we just put away some Air Max right now, but you know, we out here and you know, we got people pulling up, we got some more merch, we got a couple of Louis bags as well. Uh, so we're gonna keep it going, see how far we get. My guy Paul, Urban Necessities in the yep. Came through 2015. 2015, which is way better than the last one. Way better. Just thought I might add that. Yeah, that's a hot take and we're gonna stand by it. We're gonna die on that hill.
What's good, y'all? This is Mark from Team Sports Club. We are here in Seattle, SneakerCon 2023. We are based out of Arizona, man. I want to show you guys a little sneak peek of one of my most popular items. So here we got our handmade MJ vs. Kobe pants. Obviously, I know you guys have seen them. The man himself rocking them right here. These things have, you know, been, been pretty much our best sellers. To my booth, Jocelyn La Lotería de Leche, number one raffle in the world. My brother, Urban Necessity, two yays, brother for life, you already know. This is what's left over here in Seattle. I originally bought 500 fair, you know how I do. I think that's going to be the release of the year. I believe so. And we keep going. The hardest part to buy it is easy. The easiest part is the money wise. The hardest part is nothing because we sell these like Air Force White. So I don't know. That's the goal right here. He knows better. Yes, sir. It's Surge. Uh, we're at Royal Surge. We're a Seattle based brand. I've been uh, doing this brand for about three years. And uh, our most po uh, popular jacket is probably like this one. A lot of our camo, it's all around worldwide, and we're really known for like our puffers and stuff. What's up guys, my name's Talon Stanley. I'm with Life Intimidates Me, it's my new brand. This is our first shirt. You see it on the logo here? That is a blue fentanyl pill swallowing a human being. Might be a little silly, but this means a lot to me, bro. This means a lot. There's a lot of people around me that are suffering from these fentanyl pills. They're going fucking everywhere. Sorry for the cursing, guys. I'm trying to do something about it. I've never seen a shirt like this. I've never seen anybody try to do something about these overdoses. I'm here to bring awareness, man. It's tearing, around, tearing down the people around us. It's time we do something about it. What's up guys, I'm Travis from Resample LLC, uh, based out of Washington. Right here we got the DJ Khaled Jordan 3s in the red colorway. Uh, the undefeated 4s, you don't see these too often. We got two pairs, both size 11 and a half, dead stock, OG all. Probably my favorite pair out of everyone that I've got on the table, the Encore Jordan 4, Encore hit on there. The blue is just amazing on this pair. Uh, Arguably, some people love this shoe. I'm mixed emotions on it. I like the breads. It's kind of like the breads, but not the breads. Drake, OVO4. And probably the most iconic shoe that I've got here, the Kobe pack, the Jordan 3, the Jordan 8. This was the one that you see Kobe picking up Jordan in. Uh, and then the Jordan 3 comes in a pack, both dead stock, size 11. Can't complain with these two. This is Brandon with Code 4 Kicks, man, based out of Dallas, Texas. Um, here in Seattle, Sneaker Con, another movie. Um, man, we're here just, you know, kind of going through, going through some of the table. If I had to pick one shoe for me today, it's gotta be the Hacky Sack SBs. Something classic, something old, uh, you know, just to respect the history. You know, you gotta, you gotta love it. Uh, out of all the pairs on the table, that for me is what does it. So, appreciate you guys. What's good guys? I'm Will from the Prolific Shop, Queens, New York. This is the latest drop we got. It's the Renaissance Pants. As you can see, the quality is amazing. We took our time with this. You can check out the whole thing. I know. 
Follow us on Instagram at The Prolific Shop. Hi guys, my name is Romy. Um, I am a sneaker influencer. I'm from LA and I've been doing it since like 2017. Um, post every day, consistent, uh, post what you guys like, whatever it is that you want to do. I think that's important to be consistent and be like authentic to what you're posting. No one likes a fake person behind the camera. And I just think consistency is really important. I mean, if you guys watch Mr. Beast, he talks about how you can post 100 videos and they won't go viral, but it's, you just gotta keep posting and one day a video will end up hitting off and that's what led me to where I am today. Preparing for shows, I guess I always come in, like I treat it obviously like work. This is work to me and I will format like all my questions. I come prepared with everything I want to film so everything goes smoothly and I'm not just running around aimlessly with no idea. Favorite sneaker con moment? That's a really good question. I don't know if I can really pinpoint a moment, but I guess just meeting everyone that watches my videos in person, it just, it's very like unreal to me that there's like people behind the likes and the comments uh, and you get to meet them in person. So I think something like that, just like meeting people at Sneaker Front is my favorite. What's good guys, Isaiah from Sunset Sneakers over here. We popped out with some crazy heat for SneakerCon Seattle today. Brought a bunch of samples, PEs, grails, all the good stuff as you can see. We are based out of Oregon and Los Angeles, so we got a place in both. We bounced back and forth, had to pay tribute to Oregon, brought out some, some, some of the good Oregon PEs. Um, one of my personal favorites that we've got recently, we got a pair of the dark blue Louis Vuitton Friends and Family Air Force Ones. That is a pretty crazy pair. Yo, what's up? My name is DJ Sneakerhead. I'm from Portland, Oregon. We're displaying some of the sneakers and I want to pick out some of my favorite shoes. These are just a couple things from my collection, but I think some of the most sentimental value, one of my first ever PEs in my collection, the Ray Allen 12s. Got these for 600 bucks back in the day and I used to think that was a lot of money and now that's cheap. So I'm happy. What's up? What's up? My name is Roger, Mediums Collective. We're here at SneakerCon Seattle, man. Tap in. You feel me? We're a local brand from Seattle doing custom one-on-one -on -one pieces and shit. Really unique stuff, man. Tap in. Yes, sir. Bro, 
Those are one of one? They're one of one. They're custom. Oh, damn. That's harder to find. I, I don't remember the last time I saw it. What's up? Yeah, good to see you. You're in my city. I'm happy you made it. Why not? Oh, you can use it. You find out what the size is. You know what? You can use it. You can use it. You can use it. I haven't seen a clean beer in so long. I buy it from the money cow. Child time? I'm not a retailer. I'm paying. <laughs> no, you like paying for stuff with other stuff that you have. You're like me. Yeah. That's what I do. I don't this is crazy. That's nuts. Cool. Handle. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna make it work, okay? Okay. <laughs> I think the craziest thing I've seen at SneakerCon Seattle is my balloon shoe. I'm Balloonski, and I made this. Y'all know what this is? Y'all seen this shoe before? I can never afford it, so I had to make it myself. You know what I mean? So this is Jay and I, right here. Long time ago. Or Zingas didn't like get traded yet. 2016, minute ago. I was 13 years old in this photo, 14. And he was one of my biggest inspirations to start reselling. And uh, I am now 19, I'm turning 20 in a month, and I'm dropping out of college at the end of this year to open my own sneaker store. And that's the plan. So, and you're one of my biggest inspirations, bro. And uh, I showed you this picture back at Denver in 2021. And I told you that my goal was to open a store someday. And, I'm, and you were like, keep working until you get there, you know. And so I just kept working, you know. Of course, like I always did. And now I'm dropping out of college. And you're like literally one of the biggest more than I could, I could ever say. Okay, what was the first sneaker that you ever bought or that got you into collecting sneakers? Uh, the first sneaker that made me fall in love with sneakers was Air Max 90 Infrared okay. back in like the 1700s. I'm really old. Okay, and what do you think Michael Jordan's favorite silhouette would be, or is? That's a really good question. I, I would assume it'd be like the one that mattered the most, right? So Jordan 1? Okay. Or Jordan 3, because that was the first dunk okay. contest. Yeah. That's a good one. Let's see. I'm trying to think of another one for you. I can ask so many, but I'm like, okay, then what is your all-time favorite Jordan 1? Uh, uh, Russ Pink one. Really? Russ, yeah. Russ okay. Pink's and then uh, Fragment are probably my two favorite. Okay. That's no, awesome. actually, let me take all that back. Nick Jordan ones. I got married in those. Me and Joni had uh, matching Nick ones to get married. Neither one of us could afford the shoe. We're both in the wrong size. Like, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. No Thank, you. Thank you. Keep killing it. Thank you. 
Jeff Hamilton, and you know, we got it all, all sorts of your jackets here at UN. We just got them all in, and I think you said you had a new couple of designs. Why don't you share with us you know, what you got going on? Well, the most exciting I ever got, the most exciting is about the new uh, super mega collage that I made. People know me for my collage jackets over the last years. Lots of patches. But, uh, this is one of the new ones that basically is like, yeah. basically a collage jacket on steroids. You know? It is, yeah, they're pretty crazy. I opened the box and it's nice. The super mega. And, yeah. We're doing it on the NBA, the NFL, and the NHL. And uh, also, we're doing the version of it also on Black on Black, and it's been, uh, it's been okay. amazing. Yeah, they're very nice. Yeah, we'd love to have them at our store, and hopefully, we can get them going for you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah. What up, guys? How's it going? We're out here at SneakerCon. Man, Seattle, y'all have some crazy shit. Weird fits, but pretty dope. I seen a lot of vintage with a lot of new shoes. I'm um, seeing a lot of old shoes with a lot of dope accessories, dope styles. Um, a lot of Supersonic fans, man. I've seen a lot of jerseys out here too, so pretty dope, man. Sneaker Con, Seattle was a success. Thank you guys. I had a little bit of money on me, a little bit, and I see this young man who was a lot skinnier <laughs> and a lot less facial haired three years ago, sitting on the back wall. Family, they want you to become doctors, engineers. Saying, and I like bought a gas. How many shoes did I buy off you? I think honestly like 30, 20 to 30 that event. So I bought a couple pairs and I was like ecstatic about your willingness to work with me on the pricing. And then I, I, after I bought the shoes, I think I asked something along the lines and I haven't watched, even though you got the video up, yeah. I have not looked at it. I don't even know the title. Yeah. That shit was hundreds of videos ago. Right. Um, but I think I asked you something along the lines of like, how the hell are you getting all these shoes? And you right. told me something like, yo, I pulled the shoes, I'm buying shit off Craigslist, I'm doing this, I'm doing right. that. And I just came down here to try. So I, mean, I went over to their house. It was a $60,000 StockX collection. You know, they showed me every receipt. That's why a lot of them got StockX tags like this. Biggest move I've ever made. And then I invested that money and came here. And yeah. fast forward three years, you got a fucking store now? I got a store in Seattle. I got a store What's in Seattle. What's the name of the shop? It's called The Mecca, but we're rebranding to Oblige. I got the bag right here, it's the Oblige. So that's okay. the new name. So what's the significance behind the new name? Uh, so basically, um, our last name, you know, we kind of went through an unfortunate lawsuit. It was, it hurt, you know, building a brand for the last two years, it touches my heart, you know what I mean? Like I put everything I knew into the Mecca, but you know, Oblige, the difference with it is in Arabic, it means kind of like brilliant, open-minded, lucid. And uh, we just have a team of just young, hungry people that could stand behind being open-minded, uh, being behind just focused, brilliant, just geniuses on, on our team, you know? And I could stand behind all my employees and say that. How many employees do you have now? We have 15 right now on payroll. And when I met you three years ago, it was you and two homies that Me drove and two down homies, from Seattle. Two homies that were volunteering for free. Yeah. Are they business partners? Uh, unfortunately, they were never into shoes. They were just like, hey, we support you so much that let's let's take this journey together, you know? Do you at least buy them like Of course, sushi? oh yeah, I buy, them, I buy them everything, you know? Okay. Um, so a learning lesson three years later, you have to research the name as a business that you want to put up because it might cost you more money than you were expecting it to cost you. Right, it's crazy. Right? And you'll laugh about it five years from now or 10 exactly. years from now. Exactly, it's wild, you know? So, uh, Man, there's so many different ways I want to take this conversation with you. Talk to me about one of the biggest misconceptions you had with this, right? Like you thought right. it was going to be right. like this was a guaranteed part of the business. Right. And completely furthest from the truth with it. Yeah, so honestly, like... What did you think it was going to be? When you see sneaker owners, resellers and stuff, we have, to a certain degree, I mean, from what I saw, a lavish lifestyle, right? You see Lamborghinis, you see Ferraris, you see expensive shoes, you see all this stuff, but... So you thought I was just making it rain everywhere I go? Like I just pee and shit money? You know, I thought it would be, you weren't doing as much in the back and I thought just money was flowing because as an Instagram reseller, I'm going to an event any money I made is in my pocket, right?
right? I don't have payroll. I don't have rent. I don't have taxes. I don't have any worries, right? It's just reinvest, reinvest, reinvest. But what people fail to realize is as a store owner, we have so many problems and issues and things we deal with on a daily basis that we honestly are trying our best to cater. I promise you, like some people come into our store, right? They're like, why are your shoes so expensive? I'm like, I'm trying my best. Not every, over not every, every shoe is for everyone. Not every customer that walks in your door is intended to be somebody that buys. So your shop, are you mainly buy, sell, trade or are yeah. you doing consignment? So we're buy, sell, trade. We open consignment to our employees, which is about you know 250 to 500 pairs, not very heavy. Uh, consignment is the next level I want to take you know, with my business. Although um, there's a lot of complications in, in consignment that I have not you don't figured say. out. That I have not figured out, you know, you're the king of consignment, which is why. You know, you know, I the way that I built mine is vastly different than what you right. built, right? At the time when I built my brand or started building my brand, right. I didn't feel like I had any money. Right. And I, I genuinely didn't have any money, right? I had I had a dollar and a dream. Right, we talked about the Honda Accord. Yeah, the Honda Accord oh, yes, that my sir. mom paid 250 yes, bucks for that I sold for $50 because yes, I didn't know no better. And I pressure washed the engine and I didn't know that like when you pressure wash the engine, you gotta like turn the car on. So I flooded it and I got on the freeway after and I'm like foot through the floorboard, but I'm only doing like 20 miles an hour. I was so embarrassed because so many people honking the horn. I sold the car for 50 bucks. And the entire way through, I've been like building this system right. that didn't exist. Now there's like formats and right. services that you can buy, but even then they don't do everything that you need, right? No. And you know, like you've seen tons of shops get it right. Tons, even more shops get it wrong. Yeah. And there's always that call out post. Right, right. And then there's the damn, what happens? It takes one person to flip the script. Right, and so much gets overlooked, right? And like, right. look, even me, like I'm now also switching right. part of my formula because even though I have an amazing network of consigners, of course. like it doesn't always necessarily right. pay the bills either, right? You gotta create the margins that right. you said because you now have exactly. 15 employees. Exactly. I have 50, of course. right? Yeah. How many locations are you at now? Just one. Yeah. And you're working on the second one more I'm than I'm working likely, on right? the second, yeah, fingers crossed. We're working on it. How big's your store? 2,500 square foot, but... Um, and you probably got about 5,000, 6,000 pairs? Yeah, about, honestly, exactly. And you probably own about 85, 90% of it. And your average transaction is probably about 400 bucks. On and your dime. average dollar that you're probably spending is about 280 to 300. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty on the dot. Yeah. yeah, and and what no one looks at when they decide to open the stores, taxes, right, payroll, yeah, insurance, rent, marketing, right. rent, exactly. And so yeah, you're touching mad money, right? But you're paying more money. And what gets overlooked in business that you're now understanding is that it's not designed for you to win. No, it's so not. how do you win? Exactly, and that's funny you said that because I sit at home like. This was my passion, man. Like, I loved shoes. When I met you, like, I drove from Seattle all the way to LA at 1617 just to make my dreams come true, right? When you're in the world of business, it almost like steals your passion away, right? And like, I loved shoes, but I'd be lying if I sat here today and told you after two, three years of doing sneakers as a business, I still had that same passion for shoes, you know? It changes your perspective on just so much things that you well, don't it devalues the the, exactly. the human interaction and the fact that it's like high tension, stress, go, 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 exactly. go, go, go. It takes you away from the passion project. The passion project now became a job. Exactly. So imagine me, eight, eight years, going on nine years with the store, 10 years in a reselling. I've done over a hundred million right. in sales. Mm -hmm. Just consignment. Wild. It's yeah. over 200,000 checks that I've cut. Right. Right? And not every interaction, not every transaction, not every payout, every buyout, every email, every shipping right. order is the smoothest. It's not, yeah. But we're expected to. Of course, exactly. And you can't have any bad days, and you can never get it wrong, and no. it's always your fault. Yeah. And when you get it wrong, it's 100 times worse than what 
It really was, right? Exactly. Everyone, it gets blown out of proportion. I'm surprised you don't have any gray hairs three years later. You know, it's crazy, man. I'm 21 right now. People tell me I'm 35, bro. People tell me I'm 30, you know, and it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, you're aging fast, bro. It is, but you know, for me. But you're having fun. My biggest thing, two days to be honest with you, that I loved about your story and saw is you put on for your community in Vegas, right? Like, you didn't take no for an answer. You started, I remember, in a basement at that. I would fly to Vegas with my family and see every single store you went to. I've seen the transformation of everything and people don't realize like you're doing this for your community as great as it is to make money in business like it's it's a bigger picture. I mean I right? know I'm gonna sound cheesy when I say this like I, I never signed up to do this for money right I I really still even still now like I've always fought for the little guy right and now that I'm a corporate like I'm right. being looked at as a corporation. Uh -huh. I'm being compared to and right. held to the standards of right. platforms. Huge platforms. Yeah. Multi-billion dollar right. platforms. Right. And I did it for 10% right. for seven years. years. Which is and then crazy. half of a year for 15% and less than a year for 20%. Right. And like the fact that I'm even being compared is, is wild. Yeah. Like and it's humbling yeah and it's frustrating because what you're gonna notice as you grow and you guys that are watching like at some point your like feel good happy go lucky story is no longer the happy go lucky story and now you're a business and you're a for real business that you stumbled on and there's no manual handed to you at the front door that wow. says here you go bro you this is what's it. gonna happen exactly. and um like all the shit that you love to do you have to slow it down exactly. not because you you don't want to do it it right. just it doesn't pay the bills it and now matter. you have a million people that you don't want to let down on the right. back end because they're selling shoes to you <clears throat> buying shoes from you working for you like everything yeah i mean you know what's crazy as a it's business It's a real owner, privilege, bro. Right, like, you know, people look at you, even myself as employees, like, bro, we have to feed families. If we don't do our job, kids don't eat, wives don't eat, bills don't get paid, people will be on the street. That pressure alone, that responsibility alone is something you can't feel unless you're in it, bro. Do you want to quit? Have there ever been no. days throughout the... So you've never had a moment where no. you're like, I'm tired, I'm done, I want to walk away. I have, but I love my employees too much and I love my community too much. Failure is not in my mind and I, I never let it be. I've seen stories like yours, you know, coming from this... Literally, people don't understand, it was like a basement of a mall, man, to... Three, what, three stores now? The probably three, three, and I'm, this is the biggest I've, I've been, and this will probably be the smallest I'll ever be from this day forward. Exactly. But I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you I'm tired. I'd be lying to you if I didn't have those moments where like, I'm so overwhelmed in emotion and frustrated because it's not going the way that I want right. as fast as I want, or I can't articulate to people around me the why. Right. Right. I'm fighting the way that I'm fighting. Right. It's it's exhausting. Right. And uh, you know, like uh, you gotta you gotta pray for it. Right. No. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I wish you the best. I'm excited. I was really like impressed with you at 16, saying, "Yo, yeah. I'm gonna f do this." Right. And you had more heart than f 30 year olds that I know. Right. And like. I'm in my that. 40s. I appreciate it. I'm that. like, and I, like every, I, I never talk about my age. I'm 40 some years old, right? And I, I feel like I'm a thousand years old because of all the opportunities and experiences that I've had all over the world. And I fell in love with this kid's story. And now to see that he's at this store, like there, like I. Yeah. I, I need you to support this young man. So tell me your Instagram. Yeah, so our, give him a follow. Our, our, my personal Instagram is Walid Ablaj, W A L I D A B L A J. Our store is The Mecca N W. And I know before you close it up, man, I've been had this on my chest. I appreciate you so much. I've never told this to anyone. I was going to stop selling shoes that event. You changed that for me. You made me think it was possible by just having a 15 minute conversation. Um, you really opened my eyes. I would not, and I tell everyone this, I would not be in this position if it wasn't for you opening that door for me. Um, that event, the day one, I didn't sell any shoes. Him just coming to me, even doing a thousand, two thousand, meant the world to me. Someone of his level, you know, giving a kid like me a second, you know, to even talk to. Um, I would not be here without you, man. I really, you're like a role model to me. I pray for you. 
your family, your business. And I, I wish you nothing the best, man. You're Same. honestly one of the most genuine, best people I've ever met. People just gotta meet you to understand that. No, I appreciate you telling me, bro. And it's stories like that, and the way that you look at me, and people like you that look at my brand, that say, hey, this is what you mean, that keep me going, even yeah. on the days where I wanna right. quit. Exactly. So thank you, bro. Thank you, I man. wish you the I best. I appreciate you. I wanted to gift you this, man. We did a Seattle uh, sneaker ah, concert, shit. man. I want to show you the back. It's kind of the Sonics logo, but something to remember Seattle by oh, first yeah. event, you know? Oh, yeah. Nah, I'm going to hang this one, bro. I, I need you to sign it. I got you. Hell yeah. Because you're going to be in the Sneaker <laughs> Hall of Fame, bro. Sign this for me. Got you. I'm going to have to have you sign my shirt after Fair this. Fair enough. Cool. Oh yeah, bro. I need you right back, brother. All right, you want me to sign that I'm one? Right on the back, boss. Anywhere you want. One. It's like exchanging jerseys at the end of the game, you heard? <laughs> yes, sir. This might be a tradition I'm down to do, bro. Man, I got a veteran's jersey. I got the best jersey, man. Sick. That's the best trade. Right, no, bro. brother. Love. Thank you. But I'm supposed to be coming into shows to make money, yeah. and you got me sp spending <laughs> money on things that you don't see every day. Um, Zell? All right. Cool. That's crazy. Well, no, it's gonna be really cool when I go back home and I show every single iteration of everything that he's done because I have, every, this was the only pair I didn't have. Yeah. And well, the only other pair I'm not gonna have is the Blue Swoosh because that was employees that. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, I know this video is a little bit different than what you've been seeing from me. Um, I wasn't really out there walking around trying to wheel and deal. You saw me buy a shoe. You saw me consign a really crazy shoe. I really wanted to stop coming to the shows for a multitude of reasons, right? I don't want to say that I was frustrated with the process, but I was like, I had hit a roadblock. Like I felt like I couldn't hit this next iteration that I needed to go to. It's been close to a year since I've been on a show. I'm not the healthiest that I that I need to be. I don't have habits. I'm not like going off the edge. I had a couple of surgeries to take care of a hernia and a gallbladder issue that I had. Should be resting, but had an opportunity to come to a city that I've never been to. A venue that had over 11,000 people come in here. What it made me realize is that I need to be here. I need to come to the shows. And maybe I don't necessarily need to buy every shoe or sell any shoes or even sell merch, but what I definitely need to be is involved more with the com community and share some of my best business practices with so many eager and uh, people that inspired me and entrepreneurs that are here. And uh, I had a lot of fun coming in and giving advice. And then I also needed to hear uh, from all these people that have been inspired from what I've done over the years and s hear how they've started their journeys because of something they saw me do. Whether it was last year, three years ago, five years ago, eight years ago. And um, I just, I just want to be better for the community and I think now more than ever we really need to focus on creating educational content um, for the sneaker enthusiasts, instead of just saying, oh, here's a crazy shoe, and no, oh, here's a crazy amount of spend like that. I got hundreds of videos that you could go back to and watch that. So thank you for allowing me to try to find myself, and, uh, and uh, thank you for being patient with me while I uh, might have not been the most inspired to do the stuff that you guys have been so used to seeing me do, man. I'm, I'm excited to be back out here, and hopefully I'll catch you guys at the next one. Peace.